Ollie! Why are you interrupting all my videos, man? He doesn't like his crate. I'm trying to do stuff. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. So, today I am going to be showing my accepted art portfolio. Um, I applied to six schools and I've heard back from five of them. So I applied to Parsons um, at the new school, uh, Pratt, Mass Art, the School of Visual Arts, Leslie, and RISD. Um, RISD I have not heard back from. Um, the other five schools I was accepted. Um, yeah, so most of these schools had um, slide room as like as the portfolio portal i guess um i think two of them had other programs but they were like super easy to figure out and slide room is really easy it doesn't um it doesn't take much time to upload your images and you just need to um, put in like the dimensions of your work and sometimes they will um, let you have space for descriptions as well so um, I know that when I was applying, which was like a couple months ago, um, I was looking for videos like these to kind of see where my portfolio was at in comparison to other people's. However, um, this video in no way is a template for your work. Everyone's art is different. Your style might be different from my style and your experiences are different from my experiences. So I don't want this to this is not meant to stress anyone out. It's not meant to say that this is the only type of portfolio that can get in because that's not true. Your art is your art is yours. It's unique. Um, and I just want to say that before we get started. So I am going to be um, putting up images of the pieces as I go through them. Um, and I'm going to just be talking a little bit about them some of these images I think one of them may be triggering for some people um, just because of certain imagery so I will um, put a warning before I show that piece uh, some of the schools didn't require a full um, 20 pieces I think most of them only require 12 as the minimum but some of them didn't have the option to do more than 12 um, but I'm going to be showing um, 20 pieces um, and I have them just pulled up here on my computer so uh, the first one this is called good things um, I made this during quarantine so like maybe March April ish um, I did this in oil pastels and it's 18 by 24 inches so I drew this piece um, to kind of I guess portray the the things that I really like about myself and the things that maybe I even don't like so much but um, all of those things kind of contribute to who I am as a person um, it was kind of a healing process I called it good things because the idea is basically that like I deserve good things and that even if you go through um, like mental illness um, and you're still healing you still deserve those good things uh, yeah this is definitely maybe technically it's not one of my favorites but I think it's very like it's very personal and emotional okay so this next piece is a portrait of a female body um, and this is mixed media I did the body in charcoal and I like overlaid um, plastic wrap and I like did finger painting with some acrylic paint um, and I actually also put some pieces of like broken glass on there as well so this I really wanted to show how I can draw yeah draw the human body or and demonstrate my use of value and texture and different materials while also kind of showing this idea 
of um, of body image and how our society looks at the female body. This is called printed flaws and it is 18 by 22 inches. Okay, so this next piece is called Brain Band-Aids. It's 7 by 21 inches. Um, I used acrylic paint on unstretched canvas and I actually cut out um, the pill bottle and the pills from a different canvas and I like glued them on there. So this is about how medication has personally, personally transformed my mental health and how it can have such um, a strong impact on people in a positive way. So I kind of wanted to do a transformation type thing in this piece. Um, I started out, um, when you go left to right, it's like very dark and there's a lot of like scratches um, and kind of, kind of to represent chaos and it moves into air, um, to a lighter area. Um, and I guess I wanted to show um, the improvement that medication can have. All right, so this piece is a um, revision of brain band-aids. Um, we are actually required to do um, some revisions. Uh, we had to choose a piece that we did over the summer and it was a dump truck. <laughs> okay, so we had to choose a piece that we did over the summer and kind of rework it, use the same ideas, but I guess build off of it. So this is called Tiny. Um, it's 14 by 18 inches. And I used watercolor and pen to do this piece. And so this piece is basically the same idea, kind of showing how strong, how, how much of an impact medication can have on us, um, which is why I drew the pills um, in such like a large proportion um, in comparison to the girl. And behind are words describe how a lot of people can feel when they're dealing with depression, anxiety, PTSD, OCD, other, other mental illnesses as well. This piece was, um, I submitted it to, I think all of the schools, but it was like the specific assignment from, for RISD. So this year they wanted um, applicants to show a transformation of some sort. So this is called Stop Crying. Um, I did this over the summer. I used acrylic paint and and then I like added over like mixed media and paper and like band-aids and all sorts of stuff. Well, each like image is 18 by 24, but I took the picture of the first one before I actually overlaid all of this like other media on top. So they're actually like the same painting. They're not, it's not two different ones. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time explaining that. I don't know. Anyway, why can't I talk? I guess I wanted to show how so many people, myself included, um, when they are struggling, they try to like cover up how they're feeling and kind of like mask and fix all of these things. Why are there so many cars? Shh. I think I, okay. Next piece. This will be quick. This was just an observational piece. I did it like a towel um, draped over a chair when I was like sitting outside over the summer. Um, I titled it Air Dry 9 by 12 um, pen. That's really it. We're just, um, you're required to add in observational drawings on most of the applications. Um, some schools don't require them, but most do. It's basically just to like, so they can like see your technical skill. So this is actually a page out of my sketchbook. Um, I titled it Beauty Handbook. It is eight by 10 and I did it with paint pens, marker and pen. So this was basically to kind of show how, how society views um, the female body, how one body type, it's like it's never enough. It's basically about how you can never be perfect in the eyes of society. Um, so just kind of like that impossible body type. 
I could talk about my art for hours, so I skipped through this section because the video would be way too long. Okay, this is another boring one, just an observational piece. I just called it living room. I was sitting on my couch and I drew it in crayon. It is nine by 12, that's all. Okay, this one is not my favorite. I, I don't know, that's why I put it in the middle because usually starts, you wanna start strong and then finish strong. So I kind of put like my least favorites in the middle. This is untitled. Um, I did this probably about a year ago in my junior year in my AP art and design class, the first year I took it. Um, it is 36 by 48 inches. So it's pretty big in comparison to like most of my other work. This was an abstraction assignment and I was exploring um, the human touch. So I used oil paint, gel medium, um, canvas. I like ripped it up, um, which is actually pretty fun. Um, and glue. So I don't know, this is not my favorite, but I had fun with it. And it's very different. So I definitely, I think that's like why I included it in my portfolio. All right, this one is pretty self-explanatory. I titled it, I Can't Hear You. Um, it's eight by 10 and I used pen and markers. It's basically about the effects of COVID-19 on everyone, but in particular, like teenagers um, and young people. And this was actually done probably within like one of the first few weeks of quarantine. So back when, you know, we thought that it was gonna last like a couple weeks and then we'd be back to normal, but no. I want a vaccine. This one I also did um, in my junior year and I called it sensitive. Um, it's nine by 11. I used graphite, watercolor, um, acrylic paint and markers. And then the heart is like, I guess, glued on to it, I think. I don't really remember like my complete thought process when I was making this, but I think it was just like to kind of show how human touch can impact how we feel and how important it is. There's Holly. This is called Masked and it's kind of ironic because I made this, I think, I think I finished it like the first day, like we had to like stay home from school. The term masked, um, it just has a very different meaning now. But anyway, I did this in oil paint. It's 16 by 20 inches. And yeah, it just kind of shows how like people mask their emotions. I don't know, it's not that deep. <laughs> um, and I used like a palette knife to make these marks and I did like some scratches through it. Um, before I show this one, I just want to say that it has some images of self-harm. Um, so you can just skip over this part if you want. This piece, it is, it's very sad. It's like, it's a, I don't know. This was done like February of last year when I was like, it was a bad time, you know? It, I really just kind of put on paper what I was feeling and I guess it's kind of hard to explain it. I did it with marker and it's 15 by 17 and a half. Okay, shout out to Conan Gray. I based the, I, you, no, I used the title of one of his songs for this piece. So, not, not my own idea, but it is called Generation Y. Like, why, like, W-H-Y, you know? Millennium kids that don't want to die in the street with no light inside our eyes generation y. i just did like an observational drawing of my sister like tanning in the sun um in her bathing suit and i did it in graphite and then i in marker i did like all of these social media icons just to kind of show how like invested gen z so why am i saying gen y I think maybe Conan Gray is in the, the generation that was before Gen Z, but anyway, it's the same idea. Um, Cause at this rate of earth decay and like, 
don't know. I feel like Gen Z is like, yeah, the world's gonna end. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. Or, that's very sad. Uh, maybe, meh. okay, moving on. Okay, this is quick. Um, 9 by 12, um, observational pen drawing. I titled it Party Light Study. Pretty boring, but required. Okay, this is actually one of my favorites. So I called this, Hey, It's Me. Um, I like took a selfie and I basically just drew what, what I saw in charcoal. I think I did this like at the end. My hands. My voice. I don't talk this much normally. I did this at the end of my junior year. So like May. And I think, I don't know, it shows like how I can um, draw with a lot of value and like incorporate like my use of space. And I did like, I have some architecture in the back. So yeah, I don't know. I really like this piece. This one is about racism in America. Um, I called it the apple tree. Um, it is 11 by 30 inches and I used ink um, and oil pastel on newsprint, which was put on like a piece of wood. And oh, also the newsprint in the back, it's like from Black Lives Matter protests. Oh, and I just want to say that obviously I am a white person, so I have white privilege. This image does not embody how people of color have like experience um, racism because I don't, I don't know, and I will never know like what it feels, um, what it feels like to experience racism. In June, I think I saw like this um, comic thing on instagram like trying to explain like black lives matter to someone who like didn't get it there is an apple tree um with apples on both sides one side has had a lot more time to kind of like develop and create and use these tools to make it so they get lots of apples i'm losing track of what i'm saying white people have had time to develop and use these tools to make society, I guess, benefit them. Um, that's what white privilege is. And people of color have had less time to do that. Oh shoot, I have class soon. I need to hurry this up. <sighs> oh, he sounds so sad. So this piece is untitled. I did it in oil pastels and marker. It was an assignment for school and basically to create space. So yeah, I just took a picture of me walking in my converse and kind of created this like abstract, like kind of, you know, second to last. This is called butterfly dress. I'm very proud of this. Um, it's made out of 100% recycled material. This took me like two months probably, and it is like by far the largest sewing project I've ever done. Um, and I guess I kind of wanted to show how you can make something really beautiful and unique by using um, materials that have been used before. Sustainability. I apologize for his barking. All right, last one. I really like this piece. I'm very... I really like this... <sighs> Alright, I really like this piece. Very proud of it. It's hanging on the wall. <sighs> it's basically like based on the butterfly dress, which is why I included the butterfly. And then you have like, like a rainbow in my hair. Alright. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.